Okay, we have a good one here today. This one's from the UK integration B, problem number eight. We have the integral from zero to infinity of x to the s minus one over e to the x minus one dx. Okay, at first it was kind of disturbing that we've got like s minus one on the exponent here. I was thinking, what do we do with that? Well, actually I was thinking, if this exponent is one, I actually know how to do this. So that would be like the case when sc is equal to two. So maybe I won't worry too much about this exponent, just kind of go ahead knowing we've got some constant value in the exponent, kind of just like if the exponent was one. So what I want to do on this to try to clean up is a lot like when you just have the integral like one over e to the x minus one, I want to multiply in e to the minus x over e to the minus x in order to get something in the numerator. So let's just rewrite this. What's going to happen? We're going to have x to the s minus one times e minus x in the numerator. Then multiplying into the denominator, e minus x times e to the x is just e to the zero or one, and then the second term is just this e minus x. And then from here, the thing I want to think about is, like just kind of create a one right there, and just looking at this part. Well, this is a lot like, this looks a lot like this one over one minus x, which is actually our formula for the geometric series. If we had something like this, we can say this is the same thing as the sum from zero to infinity of x to the n. So doing the same kind of thing, what I want to use is one over one minus e minus x, and just kind of plugging in over here, we want to say this is going to be like e minus x to the n. And of course for the geometric series, in order for this to converge, we have this condition that the absolute value of x needs to be less than one. So over here, in order to use this, what we're going to need is we're going to need absolute value e minus x. We don't really need that because that's always positive but this need this thing now needs to be less than one. But this is actually gonna be okay looking at our bounds. Now technically at zero, when x is zero, this value is equal to one, but for an integral, you don't really need to worry what happens at the bound, it's just gonna be close to the bound. And so this is just gonna be decreasing as this goes to infinity, this thing here is going off to zero. So this condition is gonna be true. So what we can actually do is just take this value, plug it in right here in the integral, continue from there. But now from here, we can just take this right here and I can distribute this inside the sum. And we're gonna get some simplification because we've got the same base on the e, so we can kind of pull those all together. So rewriting this, now we're gonna have everything inside of our sum. We'll have the x to the s minus one. And then when we multiply the terms with the e as the base in common. And then when we multiply this together, I can kind of factor out minus x and then we'll have this times n plus one. And then from here, I can just swap the sum with the integral, and then that's gonna be pretty helpful because then this is gonna be an integral we can do. So we'll bring the sum outside, and then we're integrating from zero to infinity of this stuff right here. But then for this integral right here, I know two ways to do this. The first way would be the gamma function, and it's almost set up, but the thing you'll notice, like for the gamma function, we would just want e to the minus x, so we would need to do some u substitution. So I think to avoid that step, what I'm gonna do is instead look at this as a Laplace transform. This here is going to be really similar to a Laplace transform of like just x to some exponent. So like if we look at the formula I'm thinking of is for the Laplace transform, if we had the Laplace transform of x to the n, then what this would look like would be really similar. We'd have x to the n here, and then we'd have e minus sx dx. And for this thing, our formula is just going to be gamma of n plus 1 over s to the n plus 1. But now at this point, the variable names are getting kind of confusing. We've got a lot of different variables going on. We're kind of clashing with like what the formulas should look like. So what I want to do is instead of using N here, let's switch this over and call this an M. And instead of S here, let's use something else. Let's use like say P. So we'll make this a P as well. But now I think we have this set up in a way that we can use it. So like equating S minus one is our M value. That's our M value right here. So we're saying M is going to be equal to S minus one. And then for this p value, this coefficient in front of the x, that's gonna be the same thing as this n plus one. So we're saying n plus one is gonna be equal to this p. So we can just kind of plug everything back in. So doing that, we'll just use this where m is equal to s minus one. So this is gonna become gamma of s minus one plus one. That's just gonna become gamma of s. And then here with p value being n plus one. Again, n plus one is just s. This is gonna be n plus one to the s. And so we can just take this, put this back in the sum, and then finish it off.
Okay, now continuing here with our sum. Now, with gamma of s, you could equate this to the factorial. So you could actually look at gamma of s as like s minus 1 factorial and write it that way. The only thing is we usually use factorial for integer values. And in the problem, they didn't give me any condition. They didn't tell us that s needed to be an integer or positive, negative. They didn't tell us anything about s. And so in order to allow s to be non-integer values, we'll, use, we'll stay with the gamma function here. One thing I can do with this is a quick index change. So we can update this lower bound here to n equal to one. But if you do that, you wanna subtract off one here. So if you subtract one there, this lower piece becomes n to the s, and we still have our gamma of s in the numerator. But now we've got no n in this gamma function. I can just take this outside of the sum. I could have done it over here too, but we'll have our gamma of s. We can write that out front, and then we can write this as just the sum from n equals one to infinity of one over n to the s. But then here, I can't really simplify this any further, but what we'll notice is this right here, this is exactly our definition for the Riemann zeta function. So what I can do just to rewrite my final solution, I can write this as gamma of s times the Riemann zeta function of s, and that's it. Okay, there you have it. Really good problem from the UK integration B, sample number eight. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.